morning. I'm at that tree again. Third time I've been here. The first time I arrived here, I managed to capture one of the best photographs that I've taken ever. It went down really well wherever I posted it. Lovely, simple photograph. Portrait orientation. Head on to the tree. Well, which you can see. I came back again with Lynn. Got nothing. And I was thinking last night that quandary, that double-edged sword of going somewhere and getting what you believe to be one of your best photographs and then thinking, I'll go back again. And in the back of your mind you're thinking, well I've already got the best photograph I can possibly get. So why go back and risk disappointment? And a friend posted on WhatsApp this morning a chat at two o'clock in the morning with a strange bunch. Where are you going? So I told him he said, you've already nailed it Andy. And I thought, I have. Why do I want to go back and risk being disappointed? Essentially, the sky is the same as it was before. The area where I'm shooting, the 90 degree area I'm shooting, the sky is probably just about the same, maybe slightly better than it was before. Now over there, which you can't see, lovely contrasty cloud behind, lovely contrasty cloud. Over there, lovely contrasty cloud. The sun hasn't risen yet. But it's behind the camera and there is some lovely light. I keep trying to, excuse me. There's a gap and I'm hoping that the sun is gonna peep out through that gap and illuminate this. I've used TPE, the photographer's ephemeris, to work out where the sun's going to rise. Essentially, it's front lighting the tree. Happy with that. I've used TPE 3D to show me where the sun is going to hit when it does arise and it's due to hit all this field. It's going to illuminate. It's going to illuminate and it's going to illuminate the tree. That's the good thing about TPE 3D, it shows you where the sun is going to hit. Now, some may say, why do you need that? It's obvious where the sun's going to hit. It's on an incline that way, the sun's going to hit it, obviously, but it, it's nice to see in real life. Often you don't know a scene you're going into, so you have to use the apps you get the barley has developed since I last came. It's absolutely gorgeous. It really is. It's a muted, muted greens, lovely textures. I'm still hoping it's going to illuminate. I've, it's a well used area this. I can see a, a real padded down part. The gap in the wall just below there is devoid of any plantations or any grasses where people have climbed over. Absolutely no damage. Absolutely no damage to the field at all. I did want to get in. There's a tractor path there and I wanted to get in there so I could do a video from inside there but I don't want to risk any damage to this wonderful barley. So it's been portrait orientation from the spot, from the spot, from the spot I photographed before. Got a time lapse going on. Do one already. There's love some, there was some lovely movement in this guy. It's not until you do a time lapse that you see what movement there was. I wasn't going to get up this morning because I am looking to get to Malam Town, Malam Lone Tree. A sunset and a wild camp tonight with Lynn and uh, Mac. I just hope that comes off. I think I might go anyway. It's a lovely tree. I took a drive up last Friday to two other trees which I identified using Google Maps. Arrived, they just didn't work. They just didn't work. It's very strange how trees 
can work and cannot work because of the character of the trees and the placement in the location in which they're at. I'm not going to go into what could be better here because it will be unfair considering the lovely light, the lovely quietness. When I arrived and now the birds in the forest just to the left of the trees are ah, spectacular. I can hear very little noise apart from some cars yonder. Lovely. So there is only really one photograph I can see. I've been down that way. I've been down that way and I've been up that way. But there's no... No, there is nothing else. I could come in at an angle from either side and give that a go, but I've decided not to. Techniques I've used this morning, I've used uh, focus stacking. Three or four shots down from around down from around here focusing on the immediate foreground focusing on the area about mid distance from where I'm knelt and the tree and then on the tree so three shots I think I did a couple of four shots um, I've done, done a couple of landscapes as well putting the tree quite in the lower left to be quite a dramatic photograph and I put it in the upper right getting all this wonderful barley in again really pushing it towards the edge well off centre in fact something akin or something similar to where it is now I've got a hard grid on I've got a soft grid on because the horizon is quite flat um, and I've got a softer grad just pulling the upper edges down a bit more You can't be disappointed. You can't be disappointed. You really can't. Again, there's no colour yet. What time have we got? 4.46, so the sun has officially risen above the horizon. I'm still hoping, excuse me, that gap is still there. I'm tempted to jump, see if I can see this somewhere. I know what will happen. I can't see it. But that, <coughs> I can't see, but that gap is still on the horizon. How long have we got? Oh, 10 minutes. As I've said repeatedly, there is not a lot you can do here. And that's the good thing about it. It's a very simple photograph. You don't have to worry. When you arrive at a scene and it's a complex scene, you can get lost trying to work out how to photograph, what to photograph, where to stand, where not to stand, what to use as foreground, what to use as midground, what to include, what to exclude. With this, essentially, you arrive, you plonk down, you set your camera up and you take your photograph. Portrait's the way to go for me. The light that was starting to develop over that side has gone. I don't think I'm going to get any colour, which is a shame. Mine is shame. Anyway, I'll sign off now, guys. As always, been a pleasure. See ya. Oh, by the way, got to the um, got to the service station this morning. I want to open 24 hour service station. I was banging on the window and in my coffee. He was having a bloody sleep, wasn't he? He woke up, came to the counter, opened the door, went in, went to get Starbucks, said it's broken. Good morning. Well, it's 5.46 on Saturday morning. That's Saturday the 16th of June. And I'm back home. I absolutely love summer sunrises. I was up at two o'clock, had a quick chat on social media, Got ready, left, arrived at my chosen location about an hour and 20 before sunrise. It was already light, but it was 
amazing. It really, really was. I know some people aren't sunrise during the summer photographers because of the early time that you have to be up and you have to be on location. I don't mind it at all. I flicked flat for about a split second, then I thought, get up, and I was gone. So, yep, 5.47 now. I'm going to get in, I'm going to edit my photographs, edit my vlog, get it up for today. I don't think I've done one for a week or so. And today, I am looking to get up to Malham Lone Tree with Lynn and Mark. And I'm hoping it's going to be good. It's raining outside, forecast, but... I don't believe it's going to be heavy or prolonged. So, hope your weekend goes well. See ya.